a couple of videos ago, I mentioned that I was going to slow down on making videos compared to what I was doing before. A big reason was because I started to ask myself, who am I talking to? So for people who are new to this channel, I've been speaking for a number of years on many different subjects and perspectives, but I decided to make this video directed towards a particular group of people, a particular mindset, given that I have already experienced what these people, these individuals might be going into. For those who don't know, I went straight into the army right after high school. In fact, I signed my contract to go in during high school and I qualified with my M16 rifle on my 18th birthday. A lot of the reasons why people go into the military is because a lack of resources, a lack of guidance, a lack of vision, a lack of a lack of knowing what the system is really about, not just the military, but what the military is protecting. When you're that young, your mind is moving so fast, you don't really have time to conceptualize these ideas, not to mention the fact that you spent your entire life under a roof and now you're an adult and your family is basically saying, all right, well, what are you gonna do? When you grow up in neighborhoods, in environments that are not conducive for producing successful individuals, and by successful, <laughs> I mean just being able to provide your basic human needs. When you grow up in that kind of environment, there are not many options available. What a lot of people don't realize is that this optionless environment is a controlled environment. It is, it is structured to be that way, to produce a mindset, to produce a situation that has groups of particular people who are going to be put in a situation where they have a very limited set of options to choose from. This comes down from generations upon generations. An example of why these environments are designed to be such a way, when you start to analyze society as a whole, you'll start to see that there's a reason why there are liquor stores on every corner of the inner cities. You'll start to see there's a reason why public schools in certain areas are given very limited resources this stems from government policy that is still alive and well today. You can see how gentrification is going on nowadays. Go back a few decades and you'll see the redlining. If you don't know what that is, basically redlining was a set of laws written on the streets to divide certain people which actually created the suburbs and created the what we now call the ghettos. Just as those lines were written, drawn by the government agencies, the same events, the same social dynamics that affect those environments on each side of those lines was a controlled plan. You don't have to look far to see that there are weapons being brought in to the inner cities to produce a certain effect on a certain group of people. There are a certain amount of resources that are sent to the suburbs. There's the opposite end of the spectrum. We have weapons and drugs and poor education limited to zero resources. This is not a mistake. It is a design. No different than the design of the mainstream media to make you think, act, and feel a certain way. These decisions are no different than the decisions that were made back during the Civil War time frame. You had entire regiments, companies, battalions of people who were 
fighting for the same purpose as so-called white soldiers being paid less in the beginnings not having the same resources fighting for that same flag cannon fodder fighting a war that 150 200 years later their descendants are still being slaughtered and destroyed by the same intelligence that was destroying them hundreds of years ago. Back in the Civil War, whether the North or the South won, we were still seen a certain way. Yet we fought for just the little bit, the smallest crumb of being recognized as a human. Even in those times, we maintained our humanity when those who claimed to own this land after it was stolen didn't recognize us as even equals, less than animals. That mindset is still alive and well today. The current president is put on to the forefront in order to lighten up that mood as if it's a joke. There's nothing to be joked about when you have hundreds of thousands of people who still maintain that mindset. I'm speaking from experience of having gone into the military in the year 2000 and still having my platoon sergeant refer to me and my Jamaican friend as boys, joking with his white soldiers about how we should be treated. This is the year 2000. My first day in the army, I was put in a barracks room right next to a soldier who was a Civil War reenactment actor in his spare time and proudly flew that Confederate flag in his room right next to mine. It wasn't until months after that and a number of barracks inspections that finally they had passed a policy, a regulation that made it that they couldn't fly that flag anymore. This was just in 2001 and only in my company, I would imagine. I would imagine other bases still allowed soldiers to fly that flag. Beyond the flag, the actions and the the mindset of these individuals was unchanged. We were required to work harder. We were held to a higher standard. We were held back from promotion because we weren't placed in those positions to create an opportunity to excel. For example, in my situation, I worked on a vessel in the army and there are a number of vessels that you could work on some large, some small. And the newer soldiers always worked on the smaller ones because that's where you had to learn everything and there's more responsibility and more things that you had to know on a larger vessel so you had to start and work your way up. We were held on those lower totem pole positions while other soldiers, friends of the platoon sergeant, were immediately brought up to a higher position to work even if they didn't work as hard or as efficient as we did. Not only that, like I said before, they would joke amongst each other. It was a known joke that this man was overtly racist. It took the skipper, the warrant officer of the larger vessel to finally put this platoon sergeant in check and tell him to put us on that boat because we were working harder than these other soldiers. We did hold higher standards. This was in 2001. This is just one example from one soldier. In 2010, when I went back in the army after I had gotten out, I was on my way out and over the radio, mind you at this time I'm a staff sergeant, I am in charge of soldiers on this vessel, 
holding the radio, talking to the skipper. This new skipper, who was on his way out, getting ready to retire, was feeling himself in a certain way and found himself using these derogatory terms such as Chicken George, among others, referring to me over the radio for the entire platoon to hear as he's giving me orders. The word got out that this did happen and everything that I had experienced was true and the company commander at that time did bring this up to discussion between me and this skipper, this warrant officer, who mind you is also getting paid thousands of dollars more. These are just overt examples of what we have to deal with. Even in a situation where you have signed a contract of your life to defend whatever it is we call this country. This is just one soldier, one example. This does not at all encompass the multitudes of subtle tones, subtle racism that we have to deal with on a regular basis. The looks, the questioning of why people make certain decisions, the treatment, the expectations, the standards, the treatment of others compared to the treatment of us. There's no platform to share this information. A lot of the things that happen in the military are kept under the rug because, for one example, look at how veterans are treated these days. A lot of us are going into the military because we already don't have many resources or educational resources to, to go anywhere other than that. When you grow up in the inner cities, you're either selling on the streets, going to the military, or working at a job that isn't even going to pay you enough to provide what your basic human needs are. This is a controlled environment. This is all happening on purpose. The surface talk of racism is meant to keep the topic of racism on the surface. It's meant to make people think that it's something that can just be spoken about. This is not something that can just be spoken about. This is not something that can be just be written off by a few psychologists or a few politicians who grew up in certain environments. That's the trick. This is why none of your politicians don't scratch the surface of getting to the actual things that are going on on the streets and in the minds of the people, the masses. You're really talking about a different world. These people are not a part of your world, the politicians on every level, local, state, government, national, they're, they're, they're only there to protect their environment and their environment parasites off of your humanity, your basic human needs being filtered through this system is not a mistake. So I asked the people, the soldiers, the future soldiers, what are you defending? What are you hoping to achieve? Especially the what we call melanated peoples. On stolen land, what are you defending? To the people who have been manipulated to think that they have come from another land, have been brought over here as slaves, ancestors in chains, as opposed to having a direct relationship and a direct connection to this land outside of slavery, who are in fact linked to this land before those who enslaved even showed up, before those who enslaved even understood what it was to be civilized. This is a warning to those who are thinking about joining any of the military services. This is a plea to those future soldiers. We need you here. Our families need you here. We have to start seeing that it's more a matter of generating resources amongst ourselves as opposed to focusing only on providing for oneself. 
This American dream has only been a nightmare for the majority of people who are indigenous to this land. That's on purpose. The system is run by gangsters and thugs who have manipulated the entire world to think of our people as gangsters and thugs. This is why there's a constant mind control manipulating people to see us a certain way. And since we have no foundations of ourselves, many of our own brothers and sisters end up defending those mind manipulators. And a lot of the times it's too late to realize what's really going on here. A lot of the people can't handle it. This is why you see veterans taking their own lives. Something like 22 soldiers, veterans a day, taking their own lives, giving their lives unconditionally to protecting this system. And when they're done, discarded and thrown to the side as if they were less than a civilian. The reason why veterans are treated as they are is because veterans are the biggest threat to this system. We have the structure. We have the discipline. We have the knowledge. We have the leadership. We have the values. We have the camaraderie. We have the unified identity. We know what it means to make things happen. The veterans are our biggest threat to the standing military. So when you see homeless veterans on the street, you're watching a war. This is the Cold War against veterans. We know how to organize. We know their moves. We know how to motivate. We know how to train. We know how to maintain. We know how to feed each other. We know how to take care of each other. We know how to provide for each other. We know how to survive. This is why there is an attack on veterans. No different than putting guns and drugs into the community, poor education system. That's on purpose. It's also on purpose to attack those who are a threat to this system. This bullshit manipulation between black and white on the streets manipulated by the mind controllers. Yeah, the Proud Boys being put out there, just the KKK, and the fake Black Lives Matter storyline going out there, sponsored by the Democratic Party. This is all microwave TV dinner storylines for microwave TV dinner minds. It's not the real story. It's the real distraction. It's the distraction to keep people who are starting to question reality outside of those completely distracted by the social media mind. People consumed by social media. People consumed by the idea of success, the idea of the American dream. People consumed by the idea of themselves. People consumed by video games. Distractions. The bread and circus. Basketball, football, baseball. Anything to distract people from focusing on providing for themselves. Defending what is near and dear to them. Organizing. We have to start communicating amongst ourselves to figure out a way to keep our brothers and sisters from fighting in upcoming wars that are in zero interest, have zero interest in our well-being. There's an intelligence going on that's designed to keep us from doing this on our own. As soon as one person comes up with an idea, you'll have somebody else coming up with an idea that counteracts that. A lot of the times these things happen unconsciously. These reactions are popping up the same way People are in this social media mindset and they don't know how to control themselves. Constantly taking pictures of themselves. It's a disease. It's an addiction. The system is an addiction. It generates addiction. I don't claim to have all the answers. 
All I know is that there are things that need to be spoken about, things that we can teach each other, things that are unknown by the masses that need to be emphasized so people can understand what's really going on behind the scenes. So people can stop fighting those who are having the best of intentions. A lot of those people with the best of intentions are causing a lot of the problems out there. People are remaining silent about these things that are going on. I stopped being silent a long time ago after having served seven years in the army. I got duped twice. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't get put in a position to where I was deployed and having to use my weapon on anybody or have their weapons used against me. But that's not to take away from the psychological weapons that all soldiers are dealing with, all veterans are dealing with. I just needed to make this video to let whoever it is is thinking about joining the military or has any question about it. There's many wars that need to be fought here for the people. The government has proven it's not for the people. And it sure as hell ain't for our people.